This is the end. The end? Hi everyone! Today I am going to return to a band that I listened to actually quite recently. Because I enjoyed that experience a lot. Um, it was The Doors, and the piece I listened to before, for my very first exposure to the band, was When the Music is Over. And if you haven't seen that one, you can check it out here. It was a very rewarding experience for me, and I appreciated the music, I appreciated the delivery of it, and I appreciated the voice. I appreciated the entire experience. So, after posting that on my YouTube channel, one of my viewers made the comment saying, I would love for you to listen to The Doors again. And I would love for the selection to be the end. But I'm not sure the lyrics might be too challenging for you. Well, if you know me, that's bait. <laughs> and I took it. So I'm returning rather soon to The Doors with The End. And I have this question in the back of my mind. What is going to be challenging about these lyrics? We'll find out. We'll see if it's too challenging in one way or other. I might totally miss the point. I, I have no idea. But we'll see how it goes. Anyway, it's worth a shot, right? Now, of course, as has become the custom, Vlad has given me a nice little write-up of some paragraphs about the piece, and I will read those first to get a bit of background, and then I'll listen to the song. So, Jim Morrison initially wrote the lyrics about his breakup with an old girlfriend, Mary Werbelow, but it evolved through months of performances at the Whiskey A Go Go into a much longer song. The end has been characterized as a precursor of the gothic rock genre, in a live review published in the Williams Record in October 1967, critic John Stickney described the Doors collation as gothic rock, which was one of the first uses of the term in print. The End was ranked at number 336 on 2010 Rolling Stone magazine's list of the 500 greatest songs of all time. The song's guitar solo was ranked number 93 on Guitar World's 100 Greatest Guitar Solos of All Time. Well, then I should keep my ears out for the guitar solo. And I will try not to interrupt it in the middle. In a 1969 interview, Morrison said about the lyrics, Every time I hear that song, it means something else to me. I really don't know what I was trying to say. Okay. It just started out as a simple goodbye song, probably just to a girl, but I could see how it could be goodbye to a kind of childhood. I really don't know. I think it's sufficiently complex and universal in its imagery that it could be almost anything you want it to be. Okay, so maybe I'll be able to handle it. Take it in one way or another. We'll see. When interviewed by Lizzie James, he pointed out the meaning of the verse, my only friend, the end, saying, sometimes the pain is too much to examine or even tolerate. That doesn't make it evil though, or necessarily dangerous. But people fear death even more than pain. It's strange that they fear death. Life hurts a lot more than death. At the point of death, the pain is over. Yeah, I guess it is a friend. That's interesting. My only friend, the end. So basically, instead of saying, speaking to a friend saying, my only friend, it's the end, he's saying, he's addressing the end as my only friend. I'll keep that in mind. Shortly past the midpoint of the nearly 12 minute long album version, the song enters a spoken word section with the words, the killer awoke before dawn. He put his boots on. That section of the song reaches a dramatic climax with the lines, Father, yes, son, I want to kill you. Mother, I want to, with the next words screamed out unintelligibly. Morrison had worked on a student production of Oedipus Rex at Florida State University. Ray Manzarek, the former keyboard player of The Doors, explained... He was giving voice in a rock and roll setting to the Oedipus complex 
at the time a widely discussed tendency in Freudian psychology. He wasn't saying he wanted to do that to his own mom and dad. He was reenacting a bit of Greek drama. It was theater. Well, I wonder if maybe that's why my commenter said it might be too challenging, because those lyrics are pretty direct and intense. And when I read them just a moment here, I was thinking, okay, where is this going? That explains it, though, and I'll keep that in mind as I listen. Now, Vlad has told me that this is a nearly 12 minute long song, and he said he wished that I could listen to it straight through without a break. In my first listen to When the Music's Over, I paused along the way at multiple points, and in that experience, I did feel like the way the music was written, it would have been better probably for me to listen straight through unbroken. I didn't know that ahead of time. Now Vlad has told me he would like for me to listen to it straight through as much as possible, but we have two problems. One is it's very long, and it might not be terribly engaging, enlightening, um, productive, or relevant for me to just sit here for 12 whole minutes listening to a song without saying anything about what's going on in my mind. Secondly, there is the issue of copyright. And when listening to a piece entirely from beginning to end, it is a bit more touch and go when it comes to defending fair use. So I've decided that I will not stop it very often, but I will stop it once or twice along the way, make a few comments, but I will save the bulk of my commentary for after the song has completed. And we'll see how things develop and evolve. Well, here we go. This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans. The end of everything that stands.
lost in a romance Wilderness of pain And all the children are insane All the children are insane There's danger on the edge of town Ride the king's highway Weird scenes inside the gold mine Snake, ride the snake to the lake, the ancient lake, baby. The snake is long, seven miles. Ride the snake. He's old and his skin is cold. The West is the best. The West is the best. Get here and we'll do the rest. The blue bug is calling us. The blue bug is calling us. Try I'm going to pause there for a moment. There are several things that I'll probably go back to once I get to the end. I just want to mention now that I I enjoyed the way he set up the intro, the way he brought in different elements, but from the very beginning, he presented and established essentially the accompaniment pattern, the, the rhythm and the sway, and it has stayed fairly consistent throughout. That is kind of the ground on which everything is built. And even before the voice entered, I was listening and I was thinking, this feels like a very nice, fluid, flexible, lovely accompaniment on which a voice could ride and sing expressively. And so I can't say that I'm surprised. Well, two reasons. I'm not surprised, first of all, because I have listened to his voice once before. And so I was expect I was expecting something beautiful and expressive and rich but also the way the music set set the table for it um, also made me expect to hear something 
where the voice is the focal point. The voice is what we are listening to and what is carrying the music forward. There are some things that I want to point out in the instrumental when we go back. I'll save those for later. Um, and I'm not going to say anything about the lyrics at this moment yet, except that, yes, the beginning did feel like a, like a goodbye. I wouldn't have guessed that it was a goodbye to an intimate partner, a girlfriend or something. I would have thought it was more a goodbye to friendship, to a friend, to a very close friend, but perhaps not a romantic part. I, I, I don't... It didn't give me any romantic farewell imagery. But of course, it could suit that circumstance as well. And now I feel like where we are, it's almost, as he said, it, it feels like the song developed over months. And now it feels like we're, I don't know, in, in hippie land. Riding a blue bus on a, on a, going out west on a dusty snake road and going to a lake and, and it feels very hippie. So that's where I am. I'm not going to say any more right now. I'll continue listening and see where we end up. The killer awoke before dawn He put his boots on He took a face from the ancient gallery And he walked on down the hall He went into the room where his sister lived And then he Paid a visit to his brother and then he He walked on down the hall And he came to a door And he looked inside Father, yes son, I want to kill you Mother, I want to Take a chance with us Come on baby Take a chance with us Come on baby Take a chance with us And meet me at the back of the Blue bus do not Blue rock on the Blue bus do not
This is the end Beautiful friend This is the end My only friend The end It hurts to set you free But you'll never follow me The end of laughter and soft lies The end of nights we try to die That is quite challenging in some, like, I understand now why the commenter on my channel said it might be a bit challenging. Because what do you make of those expressions? How do you put it in the context of the song? How do you, how do you make sense of it musically, artistically? Is it just a string of crude exclamations? Is it... I wouldn't say so. I think I think there's something a lot more going on here. Not only on the surface, because... Well, okay, let's go back to the beginning. And I won't play the entire song all the way through again. But I want to... I tried to make note of some points along the way that I want to return to and talk about. And then when we get to the end, again, I will try to have come to a conclusion. I have several ideas in my mind right now. And as I go back, maybe they'll develop a bit. And then I'll, I'll tell you how I take it in this moment. Although it does strike me as a song that, at least as far as the lyrics go, it's one that you could dwell on for quite a while and, and really mull over and try to decide how am I going to take these, interpret these, how do I how do I make sense and apply them? And so I don't expect to come to some grand authoritative conclusion right now. But I will share with you my thoughts as as I go through again spot spots along the way and then how how it wraps up after doing that. Yes, I enjoyed this opening a lot. One of the things I enjoyed about it is the way in which we have the guitar, we have the drums, we have some other touches of something which I, maybe a synthesizer or, it's, it's kind of keyboardy sounding, but high, higher in the pitch range. And it's an interesting combination of instruments when you sit, when you sit back and think about it. Okay, a plucked string instrument. Let's say that those higher pitches are something synthesized, kind of like a, well, let's see here. Let me listen again. They feel a bit plucked as well. Maybe like running your hands along, along the strings high on a harp or perhaps a dulcimer or other something like that. And then of course you have the drums, which are just doing little touches. But it's nice to see how they are made to flow and mesh together. It's 
When you think about the way the sound is created on a, on a plucked string instrument, guitar, harp, dulcimer, all of those, there is a, a fairly rapid sound delay. You have the pitch, which strikes immediately, and it dies away fairly quickly. With percussion, you have the same thing, more dramatically so. I accidentally just hit my hand on the harp, but it's a good illustration. You have the sudden explosion of sound, and then it dies away. Now, what he's done is he's using probably some symbols of some type where the sound continues a little bit more than on one of the big drums. And you can tell I, I have not mastered all the terminology and names of the different parts of the drum set, even though Carl gave me a lesson on it and he told me all the different parts. I still need to work on keeping them fresh in my mind. Anyway, that aside. So we have, we have all of these different sounds, which are quite gentle, quite, quite light. And they're being sprinkled together to create a very nice, easy texture. A little strumming, a little bit of this, a little bit of this. Touch, touch, touch. A little bit of, and then, and then we have bum da dum, bum bum dum da dum, which we don't know it in this moment, but that is going to be the primary feature of the accompaniment throughout. That is the setup of the accompaniment pattern instrumentally, and so it's being put in its place right away at the beginning. It begins to feel a bit improvisatory. At the same time, I want to say it almost feels slightly, slightly Latin in its accompaniment style. There's, there's a slight bit of that syncopation and that, that bass pattern and, and just the swaying rhythm. It's very gentle, but it gives it a sort of sultry feeling. And, and it's a bit like stepping out the door in the south on a hot, humid summer day where everything is very still, very quiet. There's not much going on, but the atmosphere has this heaviness to it. There's, there's this feeling of weight and submerged, being submerged under this, this blanket of humidity, moisture, heaviness, damp weight. Well, I am from the South and we have these kinds of humid summer days. So that's, that's an easy thing for me to, to relate it to. And it feels a bit heavy, a bit oppressive, even though it's very soft and very light sonically. The way it's set together gives it this humid, oppressive feeling, rather like the end. Now we're settling into this rhythm and this swaying It's almost like a whip cracking. And then the bass comes in. And then again, something that gives it almost a, a Spanish feel or 
or something like that but but it's not a very celebratory feeling instead you feel all these textures coming in and it's almost mysterious and and dark and foreboding in a way This is the end. And then the voice comes in. Again, this wonderful voice that is so full and melodic, warm. It has a sort of velvety feel to the tone. It's very clear, gentle, mild. And yet, as I was listening to this song, it never got to be bright. It stayed feeling rather limp and lifeless throughout. Again, it contributes to this atmosphere and this sense of there's nothing to look forward to. This is the end. There's there's nothing in the future because even even the the way the music continues on and on it's not really going anywhere with a sense of purpose or direction we're just kind of floating and swaying in this state of reflection meditation realization that it's over there's there's nothing ahead of us This is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The bass the adds end. some nice warmth and depth oh, to it. Oh, love and love and the organ end. comes in. You hear, you hear that little organ swell, which, again, all of these sounds are so. Friendly and gentle, and yet here, the way they're set up, there's, it's, it's not a comfortable setting. Oh, oh. Or perhaps I should say it's not a comforting setting. Nice to see how he's taken this organ to create a sort of swell and then psh, right at the at the peak of that crescendo. Bom, pew, and it it gives a an extra point to the end to the end of that organ swell. Listen to that again. It's really nice. My So all of this is, feels like a kind of farewell, at the same time an introduction to the entire song. I am keeping in my mind what he said about the fact that this started with an idea and then it developed over time and morphed into something far bigger, far more expensive, going different places. And so I'm not expecting necessarily a linear thought process throughout the lyrics. Although I will say right now that the music itself does provide us a sort of linear track on which to travel so that we can follow from one thought to the next. That doesn't mean that the lyrics are themselves expressing something continual or, or linear in its in its 
message. But it's interesting to note here that at the beginning here, this is the end, my beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend. The end of our elaborate plans, the end of everything that stands, the end, no safety or surprise, the end. I'll never look into your eyes again. He's not saying that it's the end of a relationship, although it could be. But as he said in what I read ahead of time, it could be applied in so many different ways. It's the end. It's so absolute. It's so non-explanatory. It's not saying, this is the end of our relationship. It's time to split up, go our separate ways, have a nice time in the world. I'll go my way. It's, it's more than that. It could be somebody, what if he's dying and he's never going to look into your eyes again because he's dying. Um, there are all different kinds of scenarios in which you could apply this that are... But, but the thing that stands out to me is that it is very absolute. At the same time, it is a bit ambiguous as to the context or the circumstances of this absoluteness. Can you picture what will be so limitless and free? Yes, this line. Can you picture what will be so limitless and free? And then, of course, it goes on. Desperately in need of some stranger's hand in a Desperately in need of a stranger's hand in a desperate land. Now, the question that comes to mind is, is this a commentary on what was stated before? Or is this a new episode phase in the music? And as I said, there's so much that could be explored in these lyrics. I'm not going to try to come to a solid conclusion, but my first impression is that it could be either one or or even both. But again, this idea of there's something desperate here. There's, there's something that is so drastic that we can call it the end. Now let's listen to the instruments, instrumentation in this area. That's what I wanted to point out a bit earlier. I like the way this makes it feel like, okay, this is what's coming next. Now we are moving into a new section, at least musically. This guitar. This guitar. I wanted to talk about that for a moment because it's... We have this big drum roll and then... Everything becomes a bit fuller, more present, more, more assertive, more even dramatic. And then you hear this guitar with this funny little twang, bending of the notes, plucking, and it feels a bit out of place compared to the rest of it. like it feels incredibly painful in that moment the way the guitar is bending and I was trying to follow the directions with my hand but it's bending so many different directions it becomes a bit exotic sounding it no longer has a well it sounds we could say a bit oriental and because of the tone quality, that thin, almost nasally sound, the sharp pluck, and the
bends, which are quite dramatic, does give it a rather oriental feel. But I'm thinking more about the emotional impact and the contribution it gives to the music. And my first impression is that after we have this expression of the end and then this desperation, essentially a, a lack of anything, desperately in need of some stranger's hand. You have no friend, you have, okay, limitless and free. Are we trying to put a positive twist on this? But we don't even have a friend. We don't have anything in the land to, to offer us. And this guitar gives a very painful contribution to the music because it's bending so far out of the center of the notes. And that clash of harmonies really accentuates the dissonance at the same time, the warp, the bend, in itself, the way he does it, creates this feeling of pain and sorrow and complete helplessness, almost. Now we're falling back into the element. Some drum rolls. The organ here starts Lost to feature a bit. And then it's as if the guitar had been a precursor of what was coming next because now it says lost in a Roman wilderness of pain. And that's the first time we hear the word pain, but but the expression of pain came before in the guitar there. And in spite of being such a laid back paced piece of music, we end up discovering that there's quite a lot of intense emotion within it. And, and the intensity of expression is very nice. It, it works, it comes out very, very nicely in this music. And I guess I would say it's an example of, of somebody sitting down and putting something together with ordinary means, ordinary materials. And yet what comes out of it is so extraordinary. That's how I feel about it. The blue bus is calling us. So, in this spot here, which I jumped quite a ways, as you can see on the little sound waves, I jumped quite a ways ahead. But still the music sounds essentially the same. It's the same accompaniment track carrying us all the way to the end and it goes on and it hardly changes it does it does get a bit more intense we could go to here um well this is where he has his okay so that's a, that's a scream that's, that's, that's a scream but listen within that scream you still hear, hear the same music happening And then it settles right back down again. And we're, again, the same instrumental setup. Going on, let's check this spot. Okay, everything goes crazy here. But this is... We're 
Are we settling back into? The same thing again. So it went crazy and yet the music is still the same. So what do I make of all of this music being essentially the same throughout? Well, as I said at the beginning of the song, it sets us up with this feeling of weight and heaviness and puts us in an environment. And in that environment, the voice enters saying, this is the end. Now, the music then carries that thought for us for the entire song. This is the end. And even though I can't say that there is a linear, um, that, the, that the lyrics are linear and expressed in a progressive way, they don't have to be. The music itself is linear and at the same time static. It's not going anywhere. It's just holding us in this, this place that is the end. You could say it's this world that is the end. It is the world of the end. And that gives us something on which to build some perspective of the lyrics. As I said, I'm not going to try to get incredibly deep into these lyrics, but I see three main sections. I've already talked about the first one, which seems to be dealing with the end of friendship. How? Not necessarily the splitting of a relationship, but in one way or another, it is the end of friendship. The next section, which kind of comes along through a little ways ahead, is, I guess I could sum it up as being the end of family. And yes, I know that he was dealing with a philosophical concept here. He wasn't saying that he wanted to do this himself, but it's an expression and for a reason, for a purpose. It's not just, oh, let's go, let's go scream out these words. I, I don't believe that that was just done for shock. He probably had all kinds of thoughts going in his mind as he's developing this song about the end. Now, what I take away from it is that this second section is kind of saying it's the end of family. So we have the end of friendship, then we have the end of family. It's a fairly large family, a brother, a sister, a father, a mother. There's, there's a, every, every part of the family is represented there. And the way, the way it is, the way a, a destruction of it is suggested is really quite shocking. And yet we know that that's not really what he was saying. He was exploring this, this psychological syndrome complex. And then after we pass this section of the destruction of family, we come to the next portion, which is rather brutal in its expression, brutal and crude. And you listen to the way he even sings it with his voice. It's very, it's very harsh and, well, brutal is what I would say. Um, F, 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 and then going on to kill, kill, kill. It's, it's so animalistic. It's so inhumane and non-human in, in the sense that it's just talking about a sexual act without any, any 
hint of love or compassion anywhere in it. It's, it's purely animal instinct here. And so I take that as, as representing the end of love. And so then we have a representation of the end of friendship, of the end of family, and of the end of love. And we are kept through the music in this world of the end. The end of all of these. And if we are in a world in which none of these exist, we are at the end of humanity. Because where there is no regard for family, where there is no regard for friendship, where there is no regard for love, if none of these exist, we are reduced to animals beasts. And so it makes sense to end this song with the expression kill, 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 kill. We've, we've reduced ourselves to a, a beastly existence, which is no longer human. There is no more humanity and the, the things that make humanity different from the rest of the animal kingdom. And then, of course, it wraps up saying, this is the end, beautiful friend. This is the end, my only friend, the end. That's, those are my first impressions as I'm looking at these lyrics and trying to make sense of them and, and in the context of the music. That's where my mind goes first. I take it in large chunks and I kind of put topics, take the topic of each chunk. I see three main ones and a summarization of the end. This is what the end of human life looks like. This is what the end of humanity looks like. I think that it takes a lot of courage to tackle a subject like this, whether it's through music, or poetry, or visual art, or literature. It takes somebody willing to explore these really heavy topics and put themselves into it. And it takes a certain kind of strength and courage to go there. And yet, it's important. Because we need to face the facts and we need to be reminded that these things are worth preserving. Friendship, family, and love. And in, in whatever way we, we attempt to preserve them, that's a very personal question. But... The fact remains, they need to exist. And we as human beings need to value them for the incredible gifts that they are. And a piece of music like this forces us to pause and reflect on that and, and confront some of these hard topics. Well, there we have my first listen of The End by The Doors. And yes, Whoever commented saying that the lyrics might be kind of tough, yes, they are kind of tough. But they are tough in a way that I believe is important. And in that sense, I appreciate the song. I appreciate it and I admire it for what it does and what it brings to our attention. Don't forget to check out my Coffee and Patreon membership pages if you want. You'll find not only a lot of early access material there, such as the Queen 50 series, or the Wall series, or the Beatles series. Well, you'll find, in addition to those, you'll find members-only material, which can never make it to YouTube due to copyright restrictions and so forth. So feel free to check it out, and I'll see you next time.